Servus and greetings from Vienna. My name is Anita Posch. Thank you for listening to Bitcoin und Co., my podcast that's introducing the philosophy, ideas and people behind Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Hello and welcome to this episode of the Bitcoin und Co. podcast. Today I will introduce you to the Satoshi Friathlon and its participants. What is the Satoshi Friathlon and why are seven people from three nations running, swimming and cycling 257 kilometers from Zug in Switzerland to Munich in Germany for a thing that Satoshi Nakamoto invented? Start will be on August 24, 2019 in Zug. And four days later, the team will be welcomed at the Bitcoin Meetup at Bikini Mitte in Munich. But before we start, I have some news for all the German speakers. I launched a new website and a separate German Bitcoin and Co. podcast. I hope you like the new design and sound as I did everything by myself. You can subscribe to the show on Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, Spotify, Stitcher, Castbox and on YouTube. If you can't find it there, the best is to search for Bitcoin und Co. mit Anita Posch. That's Bitcoin und das kaufmännische und. Or you can also go to bitcoinundco.com-de where you can find all the links too. Please subscribe to the new show, as I will delete the German episodes from the English feed in a few days. So now, before we start, a little ad from my friends at Card Wallet, and then we begin the interview. Do you want to keep your Bitcoin safe long term? The Card Wallet is the best cold storage solution a retail customer can get. It's easy to use and completely offline. No hassles with updates, passwords or hacks. I gave one to friends as a wedding gift. They are Bitcoin newbies, but with the card wallet, even they can hodl Bitcoin securely. And the best thing is, my friends at cardwallet.com made a special offer for all the listeners of my podcast. If you go to www.cardwallet.com forward slash Anita, you'll get 20% off the price. So go to www cardwallet.com forward slash A-N-I-T-A and buy a card wallet with a 20% discount. Hello everybody. Hello Vitus, Thomas, Moritz, Veronica, Jeremias and Andreas. Thanks for taking the time to do this interview with me. All the participants of the Satoshi Friathlon are here in this remote call before we get together and start the Friathlon next Saturday. For a start, Please introduce yourself and tell us which days and disciplines you are participating in. Afterwards, we will get deeper into the idea behind the Satoshi Friathlon and why you participate. So um, let's start with Vitus. Vitus, uh, please tell us a little bit about you and what's your part in the Friathlon. Hello, um, I'm Vitus. Thanks for inviting me. I'm uh, all, basically I started the uh, Satoshi Friathlon. I'm doing all four days, so the whole Satoshi Friathlon. Okay, thanks, uh, Moritz. Uh, what are you spending your time on usually, and what's your part in the Friathlon? Yeah, hi. Um, thank you also for for having me. Um, I'm an entrepreneur and developer by, by profession. And I like to do a lot of sports, um, many mountain biking um, in, in the past, a lot of mountain biking. And I only got into swimming last year. And yeah, basically was, was talking with, with Vitus um, in the beginning of, of 2019, what, what we could probably do regarding triathlon or these kind of things. And then he came by with, with that idea of the Satoshi Friathlon. And yeah, it was... <laughs> hooked by that, that, that idea pretty fast so I, I liked, liked it a lot um, and yeah so I'm, I'm in the core team as, as well doing all the four days so I'm, I'm really excited about it Okay great so Moritz uh, it sounds that you are also a Bitcoiner or interested in Bitcoin um, Yeah def definitely so I think uh, the first time um, I got into contact with it was like in 
somewhere in, in 2012, 2013, um, when there was the first first rise to I think like $200 it was then, and that, that got some some attention. And uh, at that time, I already thought about getting into into the mining, and but somehow I, I just yeah forgot about it or got got um, yeah didn't think about it more and then i got into into mining in 2017 um we had we had office and in that time um we were really all excited about about bitcoin and, and all the cryptocurrencies and the nice thing was that we actually we had free kind kind of um, free um, current of free electricity so that that was definitely a, a bonus so we got into it and yeah i think it's it's a really really great great idea or great great thing to to have and it's, it's also very very nice to combine it with the sports so i think that's it's a great thing yeah, I think that was also it's also the, the the story behind and the combination of sport and Bitcoin what's interesting to me. Yeah, uh, Thomas, I think you're a triathlete. Uh, uh, how did you come up with the Satoshi Triathlon? Yeah, hi. Uh, so it all started um, with the with the call from uh, Vitus that he just asked me. Um, if I wanted to join uh, in a yeah like crazy event, so he told me um, how it uh, should be, and uh, yeah, there there were not a moment um, of thinking. It was just yeah, I want to be uh, in this thing and um, uh, and join the whole four days. So um, and yeah, with my with my um, sport in triathlon uh, in the couple of years before it's um a cool thing to do it in four days and like a middle distance um i do it um right now in um during the year but um the thing after it so the swimming the biking and the running on the other three days it will be um complete different thing. so i'm really really excited about that and um yeah, let's see how the body will uh, will work in these four days. <laughs> yeah, um, then we have Jeremias, Jeremias Kangas. Uh, I think you are our most prominent participant as the founder of Local Bitcoins. How did you get into the Satoshi Triathlon? I met Vitus on Telegram, Telegram, and I heard about the event, and it sounded really cool. First, I promised. Uh, first, Vitus asked asked me to join for the run. Uh, then I said that I have been down doing some cycling as well, so I, I did, uh, decided to, uh, but then then in the end I decided to try the whole whole half triathlon so for the first day. So I'm I'm not really <laughs> I don't, I'm not really that hardcore so that I can't really take the other days, but the first day should be should be doable for me. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's super that you're joining us, and um, I'm also on the first day, and I'm also just I'm just running, and I ah, know I'm not running. <laughs> that part is doing Andreas Zeller. Andreas, uh, hello. You're the brother of uh, Vitus. How did he get you into this? Hello, I'm Andreas. Um, yeah, as you mentioned, I'm Vitus' brother. And how I got into it, I mean, you can ask Vitus, but he asked me if I want to help and if I want to uh, uh, be participate in this um, cool uh, situation. So, um, yeah. He asked me um, if I can help, and I said, Fitos, uh, of course, I'm helping. So, And now um, I'm participating, and I'm running a half marathon, so hopefully I can do it. And, yeah, the other side, uh, hopefully I can uh, support you guys. That's great. Thanks. And last but not least, we have Veronika, Veronika Kütt. Hi. Uh, please introduce yourself, and um, what are you doing? Hey, uh, yeah, this is Veronica. Um, yeah, I'm actually, I was quite a lot into running until like 
three years ago and I got um, aware of this whole thing when Vitos did his tour in uh, in January where he cycled from Switzerland to uh, EZB in Frankfurt. I'm based in Frankfurt and uh, we welcomed him here. And I think it's a very, very nice initiative and uh, to combine sports with Bitcoin as uh, at the moment it's mainly like carnivore stuff <laughs> in the in the Bitcoin community. No. Um, so yeah, and for me, I got injured like three years ago, focusing on yoga then, and I thought it's a, it's a very nice, um, goal to set, to, to get into running and, and to merge these two parts, um, in my life, like sports and Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. Uh, you told me before that you've been running ultra marathons. What is this? Um, an ultra marathon is, is any distance that is longer than a marathon. I did two. Actually, the first one, I, I kind of stumbled into it. Like uh, there was uh, three and a half years ago in Nicaragua, uh, which was an awesome experience. Um, and uh, yeah, then I was so hooked that I, <laughs> that I uh, signed up for the next one, which was 90 kilometers and like 4,000 meters in altitude difference. Um, and at that point still, um, so like not being able to finish a race when I when I kind of knew I should so uh, that was when I got injured and uh, I couldn't run for quite some time after that mm. but um, yeah this is a very like for for me like on a, on a mental level a, a very very interesting uh, thing to do so I slowly want to want to start running more but last two years also this whole bitcoin rabbit hole sucked me up quite a bit <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's the same for me and uh this year in 2019 uh i wasn't riding so much so actually uh when vitus came up with the triathlon it was a great uh thing to set a new goal and to say okay now i have to go and cycle more <laughs> yeah so uh vitus um Please tell us uh, why and how did you come up with the idea for the Team Satoshi? I start. I, I had the idea last year because I thought, um, how can I be a, a part of the Bitcoin ecosystem and uh, maybe even uh, earn Bitcoin instead of uh, euros or other fiat uh, currencies? And um, I thought about it a lot. I and then. Finally, I had the idea because uh, that same year I started cycling again, uh, which was my sports uh, quite a while ago. And I had the idea of uh, doing the Tour de Satoshi uh, for the 10 year anniversary of uh, Bitcoin. And I thought um, that Bitcoin has in the public eye, in the public image, it has not a very good image. Uh, there's a lot of bad news about Bitcoin, um, which doesn't represent Uh, what Bitcoin actually is fairly, I believe. And therefore I thought, um, what would uh, a CEO of Bitcoin, if it was a company, which is obviously not, uh, do? And I thought a CEO would probably found a marketing um, uh, marketing um, thing and, and the marketing um, uh, would decide to maybe even sponsor a sports team because sports is a very emotional topic for people. Um, and sports is a language that everybody understands. Um, and I think you can get messages across with sports that you, that you can't with other, with other means. So yeah, that was the idea. And I thought, okay, I tried out in a prototype. The prototype was the 10 day, uh, tour de Satoshi from Florence, uh, in Italy to Frankfurt. And uh, yeah, so it got some attention. Uh, people liked it. So I decided, okay, why not do another thing? And that thing is now the Satoshi Friathlon. And I'm very happy that you guys, all you guys are joining, joining me and that we're doing this together. Yeah. Um, can you summarize what the Tour de Satoshi was? Sure. Uh, Tour de Satoshi... Um, in January, uh, 3rd of January uh, this year was the 10th anniversary of the Bitcoin um, blockchain, meaning the Genesis block of Bitcoin. Um, and I started um, a bike tour from Florence in front of the um, Palazzo Medici Riccardi, where about 600 years ago, modern banking uh, had its beginnings. 
um, and I biked um, in 10 days to Frankfurt uh, across the Alps in winter um, to Frankfurt in front of the European Central Bank um, with the mission to pay every night in the hotel with Bitcoin. That was unfortunately, uh, or fortunately, almost uh, successful, let's say it that way. Um, out of nine nights, I could pay seven nights with Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. Great. And um, is this also the goal for the Satoshi Friathlon, to pay somebody with Bitcoin, or what's the goal of the Friathlon? Um, so, no, this, in this case, it's not like that. In this case, um, it's just um, creating awareness for Bitcoin, creating awareness for decentralization of uh, money and power. And um, we're obviously, we have a lot of costs involved organizing the Satoshi Friathlon. And the idea is, since we pay those costs in euros, um, to convert these euros into Bitcoin by donations and sponsorships, Uh, so we found a sponsor, which is uh, Local Bitcoins, um, and uh, we're hoping for donations during the Sat Satoshi Friathlon to be able to cover our costs and maybe even uh, earn some Bitcoin so we could convert basically euros into Bitcoin. Yeah, and also I think the idea is also to sponsor other athletes who want to participate in sports events all over the world. Uh, yeah, so the idea is that um, when this gets um, some coverage and people uh, understand that you can get donations uh, when you when you join Team Satoshi and do sportive challenges, uh, that um, you can see, okay, I can earn Bitcoin doing my thing, and I can I can find my own sponsors. So the idea is basically with Team Satoshi to have a decentralized uh, sports team. That's why the uh, website, uh, teamsatoshi.org, is a wiki where anybody can create an account and anybody can create their own challenges in their own country and, and, and collect donations as well as sponsorships on their own. Mm -hmm. But it's not now everything about donations or earning Bitcoin. It's just the basis for being able to attend these events and uh, create positive awareness about Bitcoin. That's what I understand. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah. Jeremias, you're the founder of Local Bitcoins and a long-time Bitcoiner. What is Bitcoin for you? And do you really think that such events like this uh, can help uh, Bitcoin? Well, yeah. Well, <laughs> Bitcoin is uh, has, uh, like has really changed my life a lot because it's my like professional life, but it's also like a happy hobby and passion so so <clears throat> well well it's difficult to say what what it means to me because it, my life is too full of bitcoin but anyway uh, yeah i i most definitely think that events like this is really really good for bitcoin like uh, uh personally i i was never into this meat eating ma maximalist stuff so i'm very really happy to see ever uh, with organizing this This kind of event, and uh, yeah, I, I think like uh, it's it's worth trying. I I, I think it's uh, it's really good good thing to do. Try to try to make this to try to raise the awareness for Bitcoin in this way to have some something other than the typical stuff you see around. So. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah, and that's uh, what we try to do with all the social media things like the Instagram account and on Twitter and stuff. Veronica, what is Bitcoin for you? And why do you attend at this event and want to raise positive awareness? Um, yeah, what is Bitcoin for me? <laughs> That's a question, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Let's say the the time when I when I read the Bitcoin white paper, it um it just felt like there is a, an opportunity to organize society on, on different levels. Because I feel like the, the structures as we, as we have them now, they're like um, kind of outdated. And um, yeah, I was, I was at some point always uh, criticizing uh, the status quo, but uh, never really saw, saw a solution. I don't know if Bitcoin is a solution to, to many problems, but I think it can be. And that's why I got like highly interested in like studying the opportunities that come uh, with this technology. 
But what's the special thing about like combining these two now, sports and and the the interest in Bitcoin? Sports should be combined with like anything we do. Like uh, people should be together. People should move, and um, yeah, just have a good time together. And um, I, I think sports events are always positive. Have always a positive outcome, and um, yeah, it's. I think it's very important when I when I look into the whole Bitcoin space, I feel like it's it's such a fast paced environment and it's so important that we all slow down a little bit and come and and um yeah, realign with ourselves. And I think sports is a is a very good way to do that and to build communities and to to raise awareness and, and send out a positive message kind of. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I also see it like I'm attending with like the Olympic idea behind, like just joining you people and uh, finishing it no matter in which time. So <laughs> I, I also see the community uh, thing, like also making a lot of new friends uh, in the Bitcoin world. I have to say all of you, I never I haven't known you before. And now we do this thing together. I think that's great. Um, Thomas, um, I'm not sure. Are you personally also interested in Bitcoin or um, is it more like doing a thing together with Vitus? Um, yeah, it's the, the second thing. So um, I, I work uh, as a kindergarten or a leading a kindergarten here in Munich. So mm -hmm. um, I'm, I have nothing to do with um, some crypto stuff. So it's more like the, um, the idea behind it to... Uh, give this um, Bitcoin a chance to uh, to grow in a in a different way. And um, the sports, like Veronica said, it's um, sports should be more in um, in the normal um, lifetime and uh, give you a good feeling. And um, the, the mindset behind it is um, different as uh, when you um, sit behind the desk and just um, Uh, yeah, do your do your uh, daily business, and so um, I love it to do um, new things to um, go over the edge of my um, of my mindset and um, try and yeah try to go further. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so Moritz, uh, as I've understood before, you're a long time Bitcoiner. You also mined Bitcoin, so you also know, I think, a little bit about the the history and the communication about Bitcoin. And there are many people who say Bitcoin doesn't need marketing because uh, its properties are so um, convincing that it doesn't need us to do something for it. What do you think about that? Yeah, as, I think it's it's really a good a good thing to have some some positive um, publicity and then marketing. Um, I mean, the, probably these people are, who are really in in the community and and um, yeah, being being in there a long time. Um, of course, they they are like into that into that stuff really a lot, and um, I understand that that point of view. But at the same time, we probably want to have people who are not as much in, into it and um, yeah bring bring it to them and therefore I think such such, such an event is, is, uh, is a good a good thing to, to do I mean um, I, I think Bitcoin really got its its main publicity in the beginning um, being connected um, with with the dark web and and um, yeah being used there as, as an as a payment method and this, this is an example where it really got publicity but in a very bad way and it kind of kind of helped us in, in the beginning to to get some some attention and but at the same time uh, still until now it's it's, it's connected with, with these things and um I, i think that that is also the idea of the whole satosh team and then the satoshi Friathlon. Um, that we want to show that that um, it's, it's yeah used for for um, positive things and um, is connected to to real people and not just with with some yeah random guys or even even scammers on the on the internet. So um, yeah, I think that's that's definitely a good thing and and also helps the the whole community or the the, the whole concept. 
Uh, I have a question for Jeremias now. I mean, you're the founder of Local Bitcoins. You, I think you know, or do you know, or can you tell us use cases in which countries is Local Bitcoins used the most? What, what do you think are the countries or where do people live who really need Bitcoin now? Because here in Europe, we're in a very privileged situation, I think. Uh, what's your experience with that? Yeah, well, actually, uh, like uh, with the latest, latest statistics, I don't really know actually which countries are currently on top. Uh, so, so to be honest, I don't actually follow local bitcoins that much nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> okay. so, because I'm I'm not that much involved anymore more on the operational side. Uh, anyway, anyway, like we, the local bitcoins gets lots of publicity because we are, for example, used a lot in Venezuela, and of course, uh, and uh, well now also a little bit in Argentina. So. So these kind of countries, uh, I don't know. They are, they are. I, I don't think they are necessarily the biggest countries uh, for local bitcoins, but but uh, they get lots of publicity because they actually really help the people there. So so because because the government is uh, corrupt or that, like the currency is not uh, stable or is hyperinflating. And that kind of places are really good. Good uh, for like Bitcoin can help a lot in th those kind of countries. And uh, uh, yeah, so so one one the thing that local Bitcoin does is they publish these uh, volumes per country or per currency. So so you can actually see see the statistics on coin dance uh, volume, like in which countries local Bitcoins is used. Used and uh, and yeah, those those are quite interesting, but yeah, so so of course like um, the 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 thing that Bitcoin is offering in that kind of countries is uh, is kind of the safe haven uh, haven similar function that something like gold has been offering back in the days. Like um, but now now actually like Bitcoin makes it easier to for people to protect their sa savings. Savings in in case uh, the government uh, is uh, in a bad shape. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay, thank you, um, Vitus. Uh, one question: I think you also want to start like a lightning torch in the Satoshi Friathlon. How does this work? Uh, yes. So um, the idea of uh, lightning torch was uh, obviously came from uh, Hot or Not uh, this year. Um, I think it was January. Um, and I thought it was a great idea, um, and it could also be a great idea for uh, the Satoshi Friathlon. Um, so actually, the other uh, the other uh, participants now I think this is news for them. Uh, only Anita, you and me, we, we know about it. Um, so yeah, we'll start the Team Satoshi um, um, torch uh, on the first day. So I'll send a thousand Satoshis. Um, to Jeremias, who will then hold the torch while swimming and will basically give it through through the whole competition so that on the last day, uh, Veronica will run the marathon with the Team Satoshi torch to Munich. And um, the idea is basically to have, uh, have kind of like the Olympic flame, um, which is always burning. But we always add, basically, in Satoshis, we always add the kilometers that the, that the participant basically um, uh, accomplished and send it to the next uh, Team Satoshi team member. And hopefully this torch will move on for several um, challenges, uh, several um, yeah, Team Satoshi members. And in a few years, maybe it, has, maybe it has hundreds of thousands of Satoshis and kilometers accomplished. Um, so yeah, that's the idea behind it. Great idea, I think. So everybody of us has to install a lightning wallet. Yeah, we'll do that. Um, the I mean, the ones who don't have it yet will do it when we drive to to uh, Zug in Switzerland. And uh, yeah, it's uh, relatively easy. We'll show everybody how it works. 
Okay, now uh, we're coming to our last questions because time is running out. Andreas, I wanted to ask you, did you ever run a marathon or is this the first time for you? How did you prepare for it and uh, what was the hardest part for you? Um, I've never ran a marathon before. So I'm, I'm kind of like the guy who is playing football and playing some tennis and not uh, preparing that much, uh, just running after a ball. So <laughs> um, I'm not uh, as, as uh, fit as you guys, but hopefully I can do uh, this half mar marathon. Um, I mean, I prepared with Vitos and I ran 15 kilometers. So, um, and my goal is to run again 15 up to 20 kilometers tomorrow. So I think I can do it. Um, so yeah, I feel prepared and I'm going to do it. Um, I think it's a mental thing and yeah, um, I'm ready and hopefully prepared. Yeah. Yeah, great. And the others, uh, Veronica, Veronica uh, how much did you run before? Um, yeah, like I said, uh, actually, I kind of stopped running like nearly three years ago. I, I mean, I run from time to time, but um, I wouldn't call this regular training at the moment. But I did like after I confirmed uh, with Vitos that I'm running a, the marathon on the last day, I did like a 30k run like four weeks ago as a test run and I felt surprisingly good um, afterwards and uh, the day after and um, yeah so I think there is still quite a good like uh, uh, physical uh, level um, so I'm, I'm, I'm positive I can finish this marathon but um, yeah. I'm not I'm not training as hard as uh, most here in the group. <laughs> yeah. I'm positive that you will do it. Jeremias, did you ever swim in a wetsuit? Uh, yeah, I have a, a swam now. This summer I started actually swimming. So I took swimming lessons uh, every week. And, uh, and then I also bought a wetsuit and I have tried it by myself uh, maybe five to ten times. Yeah. So I have done it, but yeah, they like this is the first proper two kilometers uh, for me. So, so well. Okay, yeah. Let's for see me, how it goes. Yeah, now for me too. So we are both. Uh, it's the first time for me swimming in a wetsuit such a long distance because I always was training in the pool without a wetsuit. And um, yesterday I tried it the first time uh, in the open water. And afterwards, I mean, I, I posted it on Twitter. And <laughs> today my sister told me that I actually had the wetsuit uh, the wrong way around. So <laughs> the zip was uh, in the front, well, but it should be in the back. So <laughs> I'm uh, at least prepared for that. Um, so I will um, wear it the right way. <laughs> um Yeah, and then we have the, let's say, core participants, uh, Thomas, Moritz and Vitus. Um, how long did you prepare? Let's start with Vitus. Uh, so, yeah, from the core team, I think I was the one with the, at, at the beginning with the uh, least uh, ready uh, physical condition to actually do that. Um, so I had to train a lot. Um, For me, it was uh, also the swimming. I did uh, swimming lessons this winter, um, so technique, uh, to improve my technique. And actually, this is the first year that I actually properly started swimming. Um, I've never done a triathlon yet, um, so also that uh, first day will be a real challenge for me. Um, everything actually will be a very big challenge for me. Um, so yeah, I have a couple of hundred hours of, of preparation, a lot of running, a lot of swimming and yeah, I'm not that bad at cycling, so I didn't have to cycle that much, but a lot of running and, uh, yeah, swimming. Mm. Moritz, are you a triathlon uh, athlete too? No, not, not really. I also just, um, started swimming last year. Um, I was, yeah, basically mainly mountain biking in, in the past and then doing other sports. And so I, I only got into to swimming last fall, I think. And yeah, 
um, for me, it really helped a lot to, to have this ridiculous goal uh, on my agenda um, doing that, that triathlon. That, that helped, helped me a lot to motivate me and go out training. So the, or my training plan was like, uh, just try to, to train every day, probably have one, one rest day in the, in the week. And yeah, we also like the three of us um, try to, to train together and, and go out, go out cycling together or swimming together. So that, that was always also an, a nice and motivating thing. Mm-hmm. And Thomas? Yeah, so it uh, was a, a, a pretty nice time in the beginning from uh, March as we sat the, together the first time till, till now. And um, I, yeah, as I said, I, I did uh, drive long before and the middle distance, like the first day I had um, three events last year. So that's not the point if um, I'm afraid of, but the swimming will be a big thing with the 12k through the Bodensee and um, yeah the marathon is just on the last day it will be a mental thing to go through it and um, that's really I, I'm really interested in how we get it to the finish line and um, yeah hopefully we can um, cheer us um, and give us the, us the best support um, to um, yeah, to to um, end it in a good way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, how do you feel about the 190k cycling on day three? <laughs> um, uh, cycling is not not the big thing in in my mind. So I did a, a couple of 200k plus rides. So that's okay. that, that's fine so far. And um, so because uh, I do the training for triathlon since uh, the last seven years so it's yeah it's more like you sit on the bike and ride so that's fine but running is the um in in my um view the the thing um yeah the hardest thing so yeah thank you all i'm looking very much forward to the four days with you people I see the whole thing as an adventure and uh, as like Veronica said, uh, sport is connecting people and I also think that Bitcoin can connect people. I would say thank you all and see you next week in Zug. Thank you. <laughs> thank, you. To... thank you a lot. Bye-bye. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. What did you think of the interview? Did it bring you greater understanding of Bitcoin and its people? If yes, and if you want to support my show, please subscribe to the podcast in your player, leave some stars and share, 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 share on social media. Feel free to contact me on Twitter, LinkedIn and YouTube or send me a voice message via the link on the episode page. Goodbye from Vienna. Auf Wiederhören. Music. Start with Yes, Delicate Beats. Idea, Content and Production, yours truly, Anita Posch. <laughs>